but we just did a pretty thorough loop. We've not yet been back up here. We know that there's some quest people to chat with in this general area. Yes. But we gave the quest item to this guy. This was Dinosaur Dude. I don't think... I wish it said this person was a human, a Turian, an Asari, or something like that. That would just help us be a little more... a little more knowledgeable, a little more precise with our our search here. Because they are here somewhere. Did we look down here? These people? No, well, it's not any of them. Hmm. 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 Oh. There you are. I've recovered the obelisk of Karza. It's waiting for you in Bay D24. You have? It's amazing. Thank you, Commander. That's going to help immeasurably with some very sensitive work. Very nice. And what also is very nice is that 10,000 credits. Suddenly, we are definitely not poor. I mean, we're not loaded, but if we wanted to do another upgrade or two, we could definitely make that happen. I'm talking probably weapon upgrades, although I suppose we could buy mod upgrades here as well, now that we're in this area, but let's head back to, it was what, the refugee camp, the holding area, where we're expecting to find another person to turn in a quest to. Okay, so what do we have here? I believe I remember it being a Batarian. I think it's likely that said Batarian is in ooh, one of these little areas over here. Like this one has a lot of Batarians in it. Is it you? Oh, this is for the pillars. We already gave. Okay. Also, Zaid is chilling over here. Do you know the current leader of? Ask me. Don't remind me. Little scumbag shot his mouth off on a patrol mission once. Got half his squad killed. Real popular after that. We couldn't boot him from the suns fast enough. Should have ended his tenure with a bullet. Is this the first time we've seen Zaid over here? I think we heard him say that he would hang out here after we encountered him in the Volus Diplomat mission, but I don't know if we went here since then. Do you know the current leader of the Sun? Okay, well, uh, that appears to be all we can ask Saeed about, so we will carry on in that case. Okay, and that is still the conversation that we heard previously that I don't think we have an update on. Batarian dude, Batarian dude. Where is the Batarian dude? Watch him be a different species. Not actually Batarian dude. We will. We will see about that. Whoa, that's a whole lot of... Sorry. Did we see all them before? This is very much the Asari section. I feel like I would have noticed. Did everyone here is an Asari before? If, in fact, all these Asari were here previously, but I don't think that they were, because I'd like to believe that I would have noticed that. Where is the person we are looking for? Obviously, there's Tarnar and Vosk over there, but that is for one of the Aria missions. Refugee. Oh, maybe it was not a Batarian after all. I found a Prothean spear on Gehinnom. Contact the Alliance and tell them Commander Shepard asked them to pay you for I'll call them right now. Okay. So, no, not a Batarian. It was a human. And we got more credits for that. Suddenly, suddenly we actually have some monies. A couple quests there giving us 10,000 credits. And we wanted to. We could go out and, I mean, not go on a spending spree, but we could get some stuff. But I was thinking 
I think the, the main question is mostly, are there any big weapons that we want to purchase from the N7 shop? Because those are expensive. If not, then we can just continue to do a, a few more upgrades to the Arc Pistol, I think, needs one more. We were eyeing, what was it, the... Article Rifle, I think, is the one that we said we were interested in doing, but did not yet do. So, I mean, maybe it does make sense for us to save up for a big weapon instead. Maybe. Because the nice thing about the weapon upgrades is that you can generally, since they cost a relatively small amount of money, they're nice and easy to just throw one in here or there when you have a little bit of extra money lying around. Which, you know, might be the case after we we are to save up for a, a big purchase, and after that, don't have anything else that we are really targeting. Status recognized. Please select a destination. So I think we're looking to head back to the Normandy now, because yes, once again, there is the quest at the Citadel Embassy, is the main quest technically, but there is something else that I want us to do first. Yes, I know. Harris is there. Harris is still there. Sure of what you saw. Yes, Sergeant. Okay, well, we've, we've heard that. Been there, done that, heard that. So back to the Normandy we go. Okay, so, we were talking about it previously, but now it may finally be the time for us to actually go to... Oh, well, I, actually, we were talking about doing some additional exploration in the Cilia Nebula. So maybe we do that, and then we do the... wherever you have run off to, the Distress Signal mission. Because we would like to do exploration first, that way, if things go awry, we can reset the Reaper influence in that area and not have to worry about it. Because I suspect this may be the place where, at the very least, the Volus, if not potentially, the Elcor homeworld is as well. I think I vaguely remember that they are kind of neighbors. And we have a mission, exploration mission, for uh, Dakuna, the Elcor homeworld, and also for the uh, Volus homeworld too. The room. Okay, so, whoa. Wow. Okay, so we've explored 10% of this cluster. We've explored 100% of this system. I don't remember how many assets there were here. But uh, either way, that would suggest that there's a whole lot more stuff in the area. Whoa. Okay, so I think what we want to do, I think what we want to do is start with the Rapi and then go clockwise. That way, if we finish on Teolia and say we might run out of fuel, can't make it all the way back to the mass relay system while we still have fuel remaining, we'll just get a free ride back. And that is certainly the longest distance to be traveled. So we get the the longest free ride in that situation. So let's go for Larapi then. Oh, what is this? Wreckage. Hmm. Big, but not a lot in this system. What's going on here? Yasilium. Yasilium is a minor rock planet that has not quite cleared the ring of debris at the edge of Larapi's orbits. It is believed to be an extrasolar capture. For several centuries, Ysilium supported a succession of mining colonies, first iridium, then titanium, and finally light metals like bauxite and lumina. The planet was abandoned long before the Reaper invasion. Okay. Okay, I'm just doing a quick check to see if there's anything else hanging out in this asteroid belt. Something hiding, because we've, we've actually seen a fair bit of that as of late. It's 
some dwarf planets, some asteroids of some significance. But no, it looks like it's just Gassilium over there. And this looks huge. Paphos. Paphos, a hydrogen helium gas giant with a significant amount of nitrogen, is named for a prominent Asari lawgiver. This is pretty close to Asari space. Technically, might be in Asari space, unless this is actually very close to where the Volus and or Elcor live, in which case it probably qualifies as Volus Elcor space, even if they are not nearly as powerful, as significant on the galactic stage. Her treatise on the reluctance of democracies to go to war with other democracies formed a key tenet of Asari political theory that led to Thessia's modern golden age. That is, staple of Asari culture, theoretically, that they are the ones that think about things long term and generally are the peacekeepers of the galaxy. Not from a military standpoint, but from a, a negotiation and diplomacy standpoint. The planet itself was only notable for orbital stations that fueled transport ships by skimming deuterium and helium-3. Reapers destroyed the stations, killing the inhabitants. Oh. Oh. Then there's the wreckage. What is the deal here? Notably, not wreckage that we scanned, wreckage that was just here initially. The Asari once had enormous solar collectors around the bluish-white A0V star. I don't know what that means. The Rapi, I assume it's some kind of star classification that identifies the size slash heat slash age of the star. You know, like the whole red giant, white dwarf, and so on and so forth. So using the star's considerable heat to create anti-protons anti for military starship fuel. Now, all that can be detected is scrap. Reapers emerge from the dark space near the Cilian Nebula cluster. Oh. Really? And established a front in the Rapi system. The Sari fleet that guarded what used to be known as Espota Station cannot be found. It is scattered and destroyed. One can only hope that the backup reactors in... The Kaipladon system did not do not fall, or the Sari fleet will have precious little fuel. Okay, so it does seem like this is primarily, yes, an Asari controlled area. Surprised to hear that the Reapers landed here, because we heard that initially the Reapers made their landing around the Batarian homeworld, and this is very far from that area of the galaxy. I mean, perhaps some Reapers initiated their entry over there, and others approached from this angle once they didn't all come in from the same side. But okay. So, uh, not a lot going on here. And I... Do we know of anything in the... Hold on. Before we start scanning stuff, let's just double check. Do we have missions that say Cillian Nebula? Rings of Alun does. At the Huerta Memorial Hospital, yes, is where we're turning it in but it doesn't say which planets. Does that quite literally mean a loon is the planet? Maybe. Just the name of the artifact for whatever reason. So, I mean, if we see a planet named a loon, we definitely know to, to scan it, but we do not see that here. So uh, I, I'm tempted to scan this wreckage, but unfortunately I don't think we're gonna get anything else in the process. Oh, except this. Found a random thing over there, so let's get a, try to get a two for one here. Signal confirmed. Okay, nothing at this wreckage. Oh, oh, I was about to say, Reaper alert is not going up. Made me think that maybe we're gonna get a free ride here in this area. It's fuel. We didn't use much to get here, so honestly, that's not very helpful. And there is one more, one more asset here, presumably on one of these planets, and we should, we should have enough free scans to make that happen without having to worry too much about Reapers approaching. Let's scan this one first since there's a Reaper right on top of it. And that is where it pops up on Yasilium. So what is the deal here, Yasilium? What do you have for us? You have... 
our Molly Sniper Unit, which is definitely a group of snipers of the Asari variety, I do believe. Our Molly is a, an Asari manufacturer that we got some items from in Mass Effect 1. Okay, so now 100% explored here, so that's all good. That means let's move on to Nahuala. Okay. So, let's start at the exterior and work our way in with Oros, not to be confused with Pharos. This also looks ginormous. Oros is a hydrogen gas giant. Not hydrogen helium, just hydrogen. Tinted orange by swirling bands of ammonia and sulfur. Its four moons hosted small spaceports used to mine the moons and the nearby Halomar asteroid belt. Might be worth looking into that belt then. Unfortunately, Foros was an early target of the Reapers. They made short work of the lunar outposts. On sensors, no survivors or Reaper forces are immediately obvious, but Foros' ring system is filled with dust and ice that would allow concealment. Population was 43,700 though, at least pre-invasion. So it's interesting, again, to hear that the Reapers apparently made an early entry point in this area in what appears to be Asari space. We know this is not where Thessia, the Asari homeworld is, but it is a little surprising, not only because we heard that the Reapers made their initial point of entry by the Batarians' homeworld, but also because we would think that if Asari space was highly threatened, that the Asari would be particularly worried. Because uh, we know that the Batarians got hit first, the humans and the Turians got hit soon thereafter, then basically, what, Krogan, or well, I guess, no, the Salarians, we, although we did have priority Sir Cash, we did not actually face any Reapers there, so yeah, mostly next would be the Krogan, and then still not much of a Reaper threat for the Asari, they've kind of been sitting pretty. Watching from the sidelines of other people have been panicking. So, uh, that's also odd that they didn't seem to be in complete disarray when things were first getting hectic during the Reaper attack. They seem to be perhaps the most well positioned, the least threatened of all the major species, them and the Salarians. Then we have Haitiana. Haitiana serves as a, a bastion of research for the Asari, boasting multiple observation outposts, glacial drilling stations, and educational institutions. While the planet's average temperature hovers near freezing, the equatorial band contains oceans and many freshwater rivers. Xenobiologists of all stripes often visited the planet as its expansive facilities were a haven for the life scientists. The Reapers destroyed Haitiana's spaceports, and its uniform defense forces. As with other Asari planets, the Reapers forced the heavily biotic population into surrender through threats of massive retaliation rather than assault by husks alone. Yeah, 119 million, that's, that's a significant number of people here, and it's, of course, pre-invasion, but now that's, that's no small amount of Asari here. And yeah, surface temperature of one degree Celsius. Unless you're in the hottest of places on the planet. Lastly, I guess, yeah. Rife with volcanic activity and scorched by the nearby orange star Nahuala, Agesia is an unforgiving and ever-changing shifting puzzle box of a planet. Ceaseless solar winds and magnetic bombardment have thinned Agesia's atmosphere, but these features are actually a boon in wartime. Powerful magnetic fields and large quantities of airborne volcanic ash make many forms of scanning difficult allowing the Asari to hide valuable palladium and molybdenum mines needed for the war effort, of course. Of course, all of the molybdenum mines. Agesia's sheltered underground colonies remain untouched by the Reapers, at least for the moment. How large are those, colony those colonies? Uh, it doesn't give us a number here. Service temperature is scorching hot, though, so yeah, understandably, they're, they're hiding underground. Okay, so... No obvious answer as to where we might find stuff. I feel like we ought to just go for the two for one here and scan this. I found something. And we got a little lucky there. Ooh. Okay, seems like we're only gonna get one other scan in here. So let's find this and I mean 
hopefully this is the only thing in this entire uh, system. It's totally going to be on the opposite side of the planet. Because that way we don't even need to risk the second scan, but we are probably going to need to risk the second scan. Saris Guard. So that's another Asari company. One that we purchased weapons from in Mass Effect 1, once again. Is that the one with the super strong biotic amps? It might be. It might be. So yeah, 50% assets recovered means there is still something else in here. Oh, we were saying we might want to check Asteroid Belt. Because there it is. Ooh, okay, we found it. We found it. Fortunately, there are not Reapers. Very close to this spot, so we should have plenty of time to duck out that way. So let's nab it. And it is fuel. 250 is enough for us to top off back at 1,000. Now we should go. Were they actually not going to invade? Or were they just being pokey about it? Maybe they were just being pokey about it? But Edie didn't make any comment about evading Reaper or stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, now we have Fontes. And, I mean, once again, what, the Rings of a Loon? That's the thing that we know we might find here, but we've not yet seen... Or was that one of the ones that we got from the previous set of stuff? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We have at least one quest that we're expecting to get a, an item for here, in addition to the various war assets that we've started to uncover from all this scanning. So, what is the deal with... Sangel. Sangel? Probably Sang... I, I don't know, man. Oh, hold on. Dakuna. Now, that's a name that we were... We were keeping an eye out for, because that is the Elcor homeworld. I was saying initially when we got in here that I was suspecting that this might have been the cluster that would have both the Elcor and maybe the the Volus homeworlds as well, because I thought they were neighbors. But then we heard all these references to Asari, and I was like, okay, no, I take it back. I take it back. Maybe it's just Asari space. But maybe those two things are not mutually, those three things are not mutually exclusive. I suppose that could be the case. Because when Dakuna's government learned that the Reapers had returned, they evacuated everyone from on Sanjil's Helium-3 recovery platforms. The sizable hydrogen helium gas giant was abandoned, its workers relocated to Dakuna. That would suggest this is probably the system that has Dakuna in it. The move was ostensibly made because the Elcor homeworld was a more defensible position. In reality, it may have been motivated by subconscious herding instinct, as most grazing creatures come together in large groups when predators near. Those Elcor, it's all about their instincts. Okay. So if Takuna is in this system, then that means we know for certain that we need to scan that, because we do know for certain there's a quest for that. Just gonna do a quick loop around the asteroid belt. Just in case. Just in case. Didn't see or hear anything, though. Okay, let's move inward. I'm guessing Takuna is one of these two. Probably that one right there, but one at a time. One at a time. Taloon. Taloon is named after the first Elcor settlement in recorded history. The planet's name roughly translates to the Deep and, res and Restful Meadowland which is somewhat of a misnomer, given that Taloon's thick, crushing atmosphere keeps its surface boiling hot, and the air is a noxious mixture of carbon dioxide and helium. Yeah, no, not, not the most pleasant of places, as it turns out, despite the description. This is my guess. Is yup. There it is, Dakuna. So this is the Elcor homeworld, then. The Elcor homeworld, Dakuna, overflows with natural resources protected by law, from large deposits of precious metals to vast forests. The Elcor themselves live in rich grasslands near the equator. The majority of Dakuna's settlements are tucked within this belt, as the conservative Elcor feel little desire to build outside their comfort zone. Their twin capitals are for migrations from the wet season to the dry season, a tradition made obsolete by modern technology, but still observed. After the destruction of the Elcor navy, Reapers moved in their ground troops to occupy the cities. This has taken longer than most civilized worlds, as the Elcor have spread out into smaller, distant settlements 
reflecting their preference for close-knit family communities instead of densely packed cities. It's 2.35 billion people here, at least pre-invasion, which is notably pretty small, at least for a home world. We've tended to see more along the lines of, you know, five, six, seven, eight billion, I think. So, uh, I mean, that makes some sense, given how Elcor, although they do, we do see them, it's not like they're nearly as ubiquitous as the Turians and Asari and Salarians and humans are. So yeah, two capitals, Serun and Malvon, depending on the time of year. So we know for certain that we want to scan that. There's also Ultan over here, which is presumably a moon of Dakuna. The first mission to Ultan, Dakuna's moon, was a century in the making. Elcor leaders felt resources for space travel could be better used on their homeworld, and it took decades of persuasion to secure project funding. Archaic harvesting stations that recovered helium-3 from the moon's regolith were still functioning when the Reapers invaded, and the Elcor station there were able to flee the system. Okay, fortunately. We have not heard much from the Elcor when it comes to how much they've been targeted by the Reapers, of course, we know that the Reapers are going after Dakuna, and that they haven't had as much success given how widely spread out the Elcor population is, so hopefully they're holding their own there. Then we have Lenmaumund, Lenaumund, Lenaumund, Lenuamund, Lenuamund. There we go. Lenuamund's scorching hot surface is composed of lime with deposits of copper. It has faint traces of a nitrogen atmosphere. The Elcor have left it untouched. Aside from orbital probes that monitor the planet in case anything noteworthy should one day occur. Not a lot going on in the Elcor system here, to be honest. Obviously, Dakuna, yes. And it sounds like Dakuna is lush and full of resources, true. But we heard that it's some stuff going on over here in the outermost area on Sanjel, but they had to abandon that. And so, a little bit tough. A little bit tough for the. Elcor to find things going on outside of their home world. So we know we want to scan this. Signal confirmed. Because we have a quest that tells us that we will find something here on Dakuna. And that something is the Code of the Ancients. I believe this Elcor was in the embassy? Okay, and just 50% recovered, which does mean that there's something else here. And chances are that since the first asset was on a planet, that the second asset will be out in the middle of nowhere, somewhere, in all likelihood, giving us fuel. We did have to spend a little bit to get here. It'd be kind of nice to get a refund of sorts. So I'm afraid that may mean that we are... We're trying to scan, or at least explore, the emptiness. See if we hear any sort of boop sounds. That might inform us of such an asset. Ideally, not one right next to the Reapers that are about to spawn in over there. Ideally not. Okay, fortunately not. That's basically the left side. Do the right side. Oh, there it is. Right smack, to, uh, not quite in the middle, but pretty much in the middle. And that means that, do we have a good escape route? Lots of Reapers coming from the right, one from the north. I think we might be looking at going south. I think south is going to be our best escape route. Where was it? Here? Yes. Okay. Nab it. It's fuel, just 175, which is just barely enough for us to get back to 1,000. Now we scram. Oh! That, that really startled me because I was looking at the meter in the bottom left corner. I was like, oh, really? Is that not going to fill our meter? And then it stops an inch before. I was like, oh, okay, maybe we got off easy this time. Just enough of a delay for me to let my guard out and then a... And then, then they got me. Then I jumped a bit. 
It is, uh, it's not the most pleasant of sounds. Okay, so we're at full fuel, going into Teolia, which is probably a good thing, because it cost a whole bunch of fuel to get here. It is pretty remote. So our question now is, might this be the place where the Bolus homeworld is? A rune? Maybe. I can't even see the name of this, because the other name is blocking it. Ar eight Bolos? Eight Bolos. Ate Bolos. Take your pick. Farthest out from Teolia, Octebolos is a low-density planet peppered with outdated mining facilities and a few independent mechanical contractors. The unmanned mining scouts that first surveyed the planet conveyed positive reports based on the light gravity, gentle atmospheric pressure, and easily penetrable crust of silica and salt. Neither methane pockets nor low temperatures were barriers to the Asari. Okay, now we're hearing references to the Asari again, rather than the Volus. But after centuries of mining, the veins of genuinely valuable minerals are gone, and all but a few inhabitants have departed. Now, Quiresia. A typical hydrogen-helium gas giant, Quiresia serves as a naval resource for fuel gathering and magnetic field discharge. The planet is surrounded by a band of seven large moons that form the Necklace, a reference to legendary jewel owned by the ancient Asari queen for which Quiresia was named. Okay, so this definitely sounds like this is an Asari controlled or just generally most mostly explored by the Asari area and not not going to be where the Volus homeworld is in that case. Quiresia's orbit places it within the system's frost line where gas giants do not usually form. For this reason, the planet is believed to be an extrasolar capture. The alternative, that its orbit is decaying, is a horrifying prospect to the tourism and immigration boards of Nevos, since they would be in the gas giant's eventual path. I'm sure you've got millions of years, or maybe even a billion, you'll be fine, don't worry about it. Sure, maybe there's a gas giant that is slowly and inevitably closing in on you, but you'll be fine. You'll be fine. This is presumably that planet, Nevos. First discovered by Asari pioneers in 430 CE, a very long time ago, Nevos is a vibrant garden planet and home to a thriving Asari colony. Sandy beaches and romantic twin moons fuel a bustling tourism economy. While practical and secretive corporate matters are handled in inspiring arcologies built around towering cliffs. Even though it has been colonized for centuries, Nevos feels a frontier away from regulation and oversight. Consequently, a number of influential political lobbies have established sizable presences on the planet. Okay, whoa! That's huge. 677 million? That is among the most highly populated non-homeworld planets that we've seen. I feel like on one or two occasions we might have seen might have seen a planet break the billion mark, but that is pretty unusual. So to be in the high hundred millions, at least mid hundred millions, that's that's significant. Okay, and so what's the deal about it? Atmospheric pressure, pretty Earth-like. Temperature, pleasant. Gravity, not bad. Makes sense, I suppose. Then lastly, we have Loxia. Loxia is a small terrestrial planet tidally locked to Teolia. Due to its low mass and relatively small size, Loxia has an exceptionally fast stellar orbit. The planet's light atmosphere consists mainly of argon and krypton, which occasionally produces long, thin bands of luminescence along the twilight border. And you can kind of see that on the planet, that's cool. Loxia's crust is mainly igneous rock with wide salt flats and occasional deposits of potassium. Okay. So that's the last of the planets. Oh, and we found the random thing here, somewhere in this I area. Something. Presumably, this is fuel. Before we nab that, let's scan planets here, because this might be a good escape route. Well, I mean, there are a couple of reapers that just spawned pretty close to this, but still, you can you can go up that way, and you've got your safe exit. So yeah, let's. I think we, okay, we, we should save. I think we'll have another safe scan, but just in case we don't. 
just in case this scan is going to attract the Reapers. We could try to do this scan and see if we can get both Loxia and Nevos. I feel like it's probably Nevos. Alternatively, we can definitely get these two. Maybe we go for these two. Yes, it is. Whoa! Hold on. There's an asset on both these places? The rare triple asset system, perhaps? I really hope that the Reapers are not about to uh, flood this system. Hope that we have a little more time before that happens, because it's not like we can just casually meander around. Well, I mean, we know where we're going, but still, if we have to go in one direction to get the other asset, and then go in the opposite direction to get the fuel, then that's probably not feasible when the Reapers are in the system already. So, let's see. Nebos. Right here. That's the Rings of Elune. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We were looking for those. Okay, so now are we about to get raided by Reapers? No. It doesn't seem like it. Okay, so we can scan here as well then. And this time, it's credits. We'll take it. And yeah, that's 66. Technically, it should round up to 67. Which means that this will be the third and final asset in this area. And 375. That's good, because that does get us all the way back up to 1,000. So now, we are done here. And that means we can head back. Is it Hypladon that has the relay in it? No, it's... Uh, is it Fontes? No, it's not. It's it's down in this direction. It is Kaipladon. It is far. Somehow, it still didn't cost us that much fuel to get here, though. Thankfully. Okay, so at this point, we have, what, two more quests that we can turn in? So is that worth doing at the Citadel? Before going on to do other missions? Also... Are there other areas that we've yet to explore? Because where is... Where is the Volus homeworld? They apparently are not neighbors of the Elcor. I mean, maybe it's in the Calliston Rift, which is where we were... are going to scan for Dr. Garneau. So, I mean, I think deliberately we're waiting to go to this place until or waiting to explore this place until we are about to do this quest because presumably we're going to be in the area so hmm I mean Ninma is the place where we had the Krogan team mission and is the place where the Rachni homeworld is so I'd like to believe that the, the Volus homeworld is not right next to the Rachni homeworld probably not because the whole thing that started the Rachni War was when someone accident or accidentally, maybe intentionally, activated a dormant relay that led into the system and unleashed the Rachni and the rest of the galaxy. So, um, you know, if Volus and Rachni lived in the same system and only had access to the rest of the galaxy once that relay got reactivated, that would mean that not only did activating that relay unleash the Rachni, but it also unleashed the Volus. Something tells me that's probably not the case. Something tells me that's probably not true. So, I think, I think, Volus are probably not there, but either in the Calliston Rift or just in a place that we've not yet gotten access to. So, for all those reasons, I mean, perhaps we do. Perhaps we do head back to the Citadel and turn in the two quests that we now can turn in. I know one of them is for the Asari hanging out in the hospital. The other one is for the Elcor that I think is in the embassy. Okay, so in we go. For a second there, it was not letting me dock at the Citadel. I was very concerned. What happened? What happened to the Citadel? You're cleared to dock, Normandy. 
Do you need ground transport? Okay, let's go to the hospital first. I need to get to the hospital. Yes, Commander. I think it's you. Excuse me. I recovered the rings of a loon. They're waiting in bay D24. That's wonderful. Thank you. My people will treat this miraculous find as a call to support their local hospitals. Awesome. Got a war acid update from that and surprising amount of credits as well. And that's starting to add up. 56,000. Definitely enough to buy weapon upgrades or mods. That much is for certain. As to whether we might be able to afford... Yeah, we're just to confirm. Definitely out of Metagel stock upgrades there, so that's fine. But as for whether we can afford any big upgrades into, or rather, big weapons that we do not yet have from the Spectre Terminal, that's maybe a different question. There are a bunch that are in the 100... Uh, thousand credit territory, so we definitely can't do those, but maybe some of the cheaper ones. So let's head over to the embassies. 